Hi, welcome to Wine Mastery. My name is John Lightfoot. This is John Murphy. And we're here to tell you all about wine, hopefully help you find the wine, if not the wines that you will absolutely love. And we're kicking off on a little bit of a season that we're doing on Chardonnay. And because we live in the north of England and we can't afford the very swanky wines that are around London, we couldn't afford a Chablis, so we got a petite Chablis. Petite. No, oh, no, not the emphasis on the teats there. <laughs> not the, okay, petite, <laughs> petite. Yeah, that that yeah that brings out. Now my mind's gone. It well, anyway. So, <laughs> in, but in actual fact, as I understand it, I, and one of the things that when I was doing a little bit of research earlier this afternoon is that Chablis as 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 an appellation is that correct? Yeah, yeah, appellation. Yeah, it only came with appellation. Appellation, yeah. But appellation. Was... You say it so much better. It's easy for you to say. Um, only came around in around about the, in in the thirties. Uh, oh. 1938, I believe it was was uh, actually became as a you know. A, so I think in terms of, I always thought it'd been around for like hundreds of years. It was. It's much later than I thought. I mean, you, you, you're doing better than me. I mean, I don't think you need me here anymore. <laughs> no, I, no honestly, I did. I did not know that. I did not. Well, so but this one actually, the petit, the petit. Petit Chablis, Petit Chablis yeah. uh, 1944. So you know, um, towards the end, which is strange, isn't it? Because the war hadn't finished. Yeah. Second yeah. World War, that's, well, that's a whole different game. Anyway, um, so it's relatively new, but what I understand is that they normally are sort of, um, obviously in the Chablis area, but just slightly higher, so they, they haven't been given the, the sort of Grand Cru status. But literally, you could be buying, uh, you know, wine that is literally within yard meters mm -hmm. of wine that you're going to pay maybe twice as much for. And the great thing I think about uh, Chablis that I love Go on. Is that, you know, it is basically Chardonnay, but it's it's so much crisper and cleaner than so yeah. many more Chardonnays you get from the rest of the world. Yeah, well, it's, it is deemed, you know, Ch Chablis is deemed to grow the best Chardonnay grapes in the world. And just like Sancerre is Sauvignon Blanc. Hey, John, you, I, I tell you, I have no need to be here anymore. <laughs> I'll let see you <laughs> No, no, it's just I, I, your, your taste buds are so much better than mine that you can actually distinguish those tastes that I, I can't. And that doesn't matter guys, you know, if you're just on starting on your, your journey, it doesn't matter, you know, because it's just practice. And practice makes perfect, but in the case of wine tasting, it's also fun. It is fun. It is fun. Right, so shall we have a look at the colour? I think we should. Okay. Now one of the things I was told, uh, not told, when I was doing my little bit of brief research, is that you should get a little bit of uh, well, not you should, but but typically you'll get a little bit of green colour in a petit mm. chablis. I'm, I'm not really seeing this. Nice I'm not really colour. seeing that. No, it's a lovely colour, but, but I can't get the green in there. No, I, I, I have heard of um, you know flecks of green being in like uh, different wines before. I'm just not getting it from that one. No, I'm not. I'm Which not. is again not not a bad thing. No, not at all. It is a very lovely colour. It's very inviting. It's very crisp. And I think one of the things that you know that the French have done so well is is in terms of their marketing, is you almost like want to taste this because you know it's one of the world's best wines, mm -hmm. and and it just so you know you want to like it and you want to taste it. You want to buy into it. And, and, Absolutely, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So should we have a little sniff? I'm ready for that, John. Okay. Oh, that is lovely, isn't it? That, that is lovely, aren't it? And again, I wonder how the psychology is here that because it's a Chablis, we're, we're, we're just saying, oh, yeah, it's going to be good. And because we're expecting mm. it to be good, I mean, you know, mm. if it was rubbish, you would obviously notice it. But yeah. I don't, yeah, I, yeah, I think you're right with that kind of psychology buying into it. But it's kind of thinking it, you expect it to kind of be good. So you're almost waiting to, for it to let you down. But... That does, does not that let does down not. at all. That is, no, it that doesn't. Is beautiful. You can, you can definitely tell this is a nice wine just from smelling it. Yeah. You know you're going to enjoy that. So I'm getting stone fruits. Definitely. But I don't mean drunk or... <laughs> no, it's that, it's that pe peach and apricot. You de definitely get that in there. Um, smell, it, it smells, if you like, creamy. I don't know if that... How yeah, that's put possible. That yeah, possible. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it? But I, I do get what you mean. Mm. A little bit of pineapple just on the edge. I think that's the, yeah, that's the trop tropical fruits just kind of sneaking in there. Which Do you think nice there's some like, sort of touch of acidity in it? Well, I'm getting a pear again, but I think I'm, I'm just doing this thing now when I'm drinking white wine thinking, 
Oh, there's pear in there, so I'd not not necessarily. I don't think that's in there. I know, but there's yeah. I mean, I think we all have to agree. There's nothing like a nice pear. So anyway, <laughs> you can't say that. Anyway, back to the uh, wine. <coughs> Perhaps isn't pear in there after all. But no, it's nice. He's, he's got this lushness about it. I'm going to quickly have a taste of this, and I think you should put some wine in your mouth. Okay. Is that to keep it closed? Mm-hmm. Mm. Everything I expected there. Everything. I was going to say, four words, that does not disappoint. That. So all of the, quite often we, we taste, uh, we smell wines and then we taste them. And sometimes the taste can be, you know, significantly different from the smells. Mm. But all this has done in terms of the, the, the smell compared to the taste is basically just amplified the smells. Mm. It? You know, when it hits your tongue, Mm. And around your mouth, all the senses, you know, it's a nice smooth, you were talking about that smooth, smoothness to it. Mm. That's there. The stone fruits, a little bit of acidity. The balance is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, he's taken that season fantastically. Like I said, every, everything just came through there. I can, t- I can get your, um, the pineapple now. The pineapple comes through much more uh, on the palate. It reminds me of a... It's the length there as well. It reminds me of um, those sweeties when... Um, Which ones? The, the, the little yellow ones. Wagon wheels. Not wagon, that's what's not little or yellow. <laughs> nice try. No, um, fruit salads. And fruit I think salads. That's the, I think that's the, um, yeah, do you remember fruit salads? No, um, I remember fruit salads in a tin. No. Which no. was like peach pear, which it would be, you know, peach pear and a few mm. cherries is fruit salad. Uh, well, I, well I, I still see if I can get a hold of some of these sweetest food. Cause I, and again, it's got length there as well. And for the price. Yeah, so the price of this, this was this was purchased from Aldi at eight forty nine. I mean, you know, I mean I think you would normally expect to pay somewhere in about fifteen, sixteen pounds. Easily. I Twenty mean, yeah. plus. Um, for for a petit chablis. Yeah. And what's that standard? It's so much better than me. Mm. Petit <laughs> Petit Chablis. <laughs> but no, that is a all round cracker. Very impression. So would you eat it with crackers? Mm. Well, if I had to put a cheese with this one. I'd probably put something like the uh, Delice de Cremier, triple cream, same as them. The what? Sorry, the, the... Delice de Cremier. I think there's one also, called, also which is very, very similar called Delice de Bourgogne. Um, it's like a, it's like a brie in style, but it's fairly solid in the middle, ripens up around the edge. Like triple cream, really, really rich. Um, but I think that would just sit perfectly with that. And that's French. Mm, mm-hmm. Whereabouts is that? Do you know whereabouts that's made, the charts? No idea, John. Okay, because this, I think, f- again, from the limited research that I did, is like a third of the way down between Paris and Lyon. So two thirds up from Lyon or a third down from Paris uh, is where it is. And I just wonder whether that cheese would, would, you know, is made in that same sort of area. I can find area. out. But, you know, they, where it grows, it goes, so. That's very true. I just love these. The limited amount of research I have, and I know it's been all over this. <laughs> no, well, don't, I mean, no, that's cracking. And so, the, so in in terms of uh, so that's that's cheese. I mean, would you say that with this you could sort of eat pork, uh, seafood, presumably seafood pork? Yeah, well, the lighter kind of meat. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's not going to take on anything big. No, like in that respect. beef stew or steak or anything. But no, but yeah, that is absolutely delicious. I mean, I. I think that quite often, I mean, a lot of people, um, we're going to continue this series with uh, Chardonnay in, in a little while, where we're going to taste lots of different Chardonnays that are very popular in the UK. But, uh, you know, it's something that I've been asked quite often, that, you know, where can, where can I get a, a Chardonnay that tastes that's, that's less expensive, so Chardonnay price, but a Chablis taste? Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to see if we can find one for you. We're going to do our best. We will. And you can tell us, and obviously this is unoaked as well, I'm assuming, because there's no... Cause yeah. Usually that oak, and I think that's why it's easy to pick out as well, these nice little nuances in there, because when they are oaked, obviously if you've had them, they have that... That, that oak can kind of mask quite a few of the flavours, whereas this is just fresh and delicious. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess that brings us to the score, John. Ooh. Ooh. You know what? I've got to take into account... And then we're going to think of a number right now. And we, should, we, we, should, we said we should write these down, but I've got the number. I'm taking into account the price here and how good that is. I'm not going to go super wild with it, but it is a very nice bit of wine, so I'm going to go with a hefty 82. Oh, really? Well, you think that's hefty? 
I'll go on. Oh, really? I'm going to go with 88. 88? That is a long way off that, John. A long way off. Well, That's really... I mean, I think that one of the things edged me towards 88 is it's £8.49. Oh, really? and, and so, you know, if I was paying £15 for this, then probably I'd be sort of like at the, the 80. But at 8 49 you know, this is a very classy wine that I feel very privileged to be now to afford to buy. He saved up for a couple of weeks. Yeah. He didn't just go out and buy this. He did his research, saved up, and then went for it. And we thank you very much, John. It's much appreciated. Yeah, eight forty nine. So, um, so for that reason, that's why I'm. I'm. You know, perhaps I should have said eighty four point nine. Oh dear. You could have done. I could have done, but I think you know. No, that's that's the reason for eighty eight. I just think it's a very delicious wine. I think you would have to, in terms of improving the taste of this. You know, you're going to have to spend a lot of money. You know, you, you will have to go to 20, 25 pounds yeah. to be able to improve on this. Yeah, I think you're right. And, and you know, I, I, I need a lot of convincing to do that. Believe me, he does. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so the conclusion is, would you buy one of these at 8.49? Oh, I'd buy, I'd buy half a dozen and have these squirreled away because if you were to bring this out when you know friends and family come around bring this out you bring out a really classy bit of wine under a tenner that's yeah good. yeah and i mean this is good enough to be one of the sort of first bottles you give out isn't it in yes. terms of you know for people to taste it you know you tend to a little bit later on get on to the cheaper stuff because people's taste buds are sort of killed by then mm. but yeah no this is this is absolutely delicious and ld have done an excellent job uh, in selecting this and uh, being able to put it out to uh, the market for that price. Well done, guys. Mm. Excellent. Well, as I said, we will be uh, in, in a few weeks' time, uh, maybe four or five weeks' time, doing a whole series of Chardonnays that are very popular. Um, so we've got those lined up, ready to go, and that will be very interesting because, you know, it was pointed out to me that we haven't done many, uh, you know, haven't filmed many videos and many reviews on Chardonnay, so that'd be really interesting. And it'll be, you know, your ABC will be... Um, my what, what? Your ABC. What about my ABC? Anything but Chardonnay. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it got a bad rap, didn't it? It and, did. And it's, I think it's taken a while to recover from that. Um, and we're going to see what we think of it. So, until the next time, uh, if you like this video, give us uh, the, the thumbs up. Really look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, Jin Jin. Chin chin.